You did a podcast for us a couple of days ago. Yeah, and I, di- I didn't know who was on there. Um, I guess uh, the Ram. I guess he calls himself the Ram, but I know him as uh, Steve. Uh, what's it, what's his full name? Silverman. Yeah. So it, was he the one that he? Somebody told me that they had just got out of jail. Was that him? Yeah, that's him. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's him for sure, man. But um, I know you you do compete, right? I mean, you you have been competing and, and you you still compete, right? Uh, March twenty sixth was my last show. Um, so I decided after that that I'm done. What organization do you represent? I can I compete in the NPC. They've yeah. never contacted you as and, and basically you know told you that they're against what you're saying you know, publicly about steroids and synthol and all this other stuff. I've never had a direct message from the NPC or IFPB. Never, not once. Nope. But I've had like promoters contact me and stuff saying that I won't be politically like looked at like fairly. And then uh, at my last show, I had a uh, 3CC engraved in the back of my head <laughs> i guess i didn't like that too much you know you use steroids you know openly you don't deny it in any way but is that against their rules i think in in, in uh in one of their contracts on the website it says you're not a late and you're not supposed to uh we do not condone the use of steroids like they they they, they word it properly where they're saying like we don't we're not going to test against it but we're not for it you know what i mean but obviously everybody in the npc and ifbb at least the males that that are competitive at the high level are using you know no, no, right, absolutely, but it just nobody openly talks about it while they're actually competing. I was, I was the first one that openly came out about it after I won the Contra Costa in 2013, and it's funny, man, because like the same guys that were writing on my on my like Facebook or commenting on my stuff saying you're going to go to jail for openly talking about your steroid use, like the same guys literally are coming out with their own podcasts talking about you know their steroid cycles. All these guys that would ki- used to come down on me saying I'm going to get arrested, uh, I'm an idiot. They saw how much attention it brought to my name, and those same guys now are doing the same shit now. You know, doing like the the guy from Geared Up podcast, Adam or whatever. You know, he used to bash me completely for, it. and now that, that's what he runs his site on is basically guys talking about steroids and shit. So it's it's kind of funny. But is it safe to say that you will never be able to become a pro and and actually be an IVB? Correct, but I, I've never wanted to be that, – that's never been like a goal of mine ever. Um, I'm done competing. I'm happy I'm done competing. There's less stress in my life. I'll continue to be a bodybuilder, but there's no reason that I need to get on stage again. Like I like the process, and it does push you that much harder when you pick a show and you know that you're going to be standing against you know a group of people. But as far as um, you know, the added benefits, for me, there's no added benefits, and I don't like the whole ending process of – you know, the tan, the dehydration, and plus I don't have the genetics to ever be a great pro where I can make money doing it, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's just not, and no, no real uh, passion in it for me. I feel like you get a lot of love and you get a lot of hate, right? Which one do you think you get more of? See, it's hard to tell because I've never had any hate in person. It's I've never once had an issue in person, you know what I mean? Um, I've never had a confrontation. I've never had somebody come up to me and say, I don't like your shit, like what the fuck? Or whatever. It's always positive stuff in person. So you're going to get those trolls online that talk shit behind a keyboard. But I don't know, man. I, I would say right now I'm getting more love than hate. I, I would have to say that. Um, there's been a point where I think I've gotten more hate. Like last year, last year or 2015 when I bombed my show, um, I was probably getting more hate than love for sure. What would you say is your, your mission in the industry? Is it basically just to educate people about various types of, you know, um, substances and, and synthols and, and just basically teaching them how to use it properly. I would say my main goal is to eventually have, have the voice, meaning build a, build a pro level physique, um, you know, in, in the next few years where people could come up to me and be like, wow, like that's what it takes at that level for a guy with average genetics. Cause you know, there's, there is that genetic elite that don't have to run that much drugs, you know, and they, they could, you know, like Dexter Jackson, for example, he hasn't really put on that much muscle in the last 10, 12 years that he's competing, but he gets the, you know, the, from the training, muscle maturity, all that stuff. He doesn't have to run that much gear. I mean, he's probably on minimal stuff, but we're not, we're not talking about the genetic elite because that's very rare. What do the Justin Comptons and the Dallas McCarvers have to take? You know what I mean? That's what, that's what people really want to know. Unless you're really competing and take it professionally, why would you ever need it? The, the two things in bodybuilding I love the most are nu- like nutrition, 
like trying new foods around your workouts, timing of foods, all that stuff, and drugs. So I personally strive off, okay, I'm going to try this cycle. Okay, I like that. I'm going to try this or, you know, you know, let me try this so, you know, I know what to put my clients on for later. Like, for example, before I put my clients on any anything that could be potentially dangerous like DNP, I'm going to experiment it with, with myself and see how I like it. You know, I ran it with moderate carbs. I ran it with low carbs. I ran it with high carbs, low fats, everything. I've tried everything really. And I, I'll be honest with you. I would never, unless the time comes, if I need to come off gear to have kids, I won't come off gear. Um, I've came in off gear before, and it's like two steps forward, two steps, you know, backwards, you know. So for me, it's, it's just not worth it. Your, your clients, uh, this is your primary business. Um, your clients are primarily amateur bodybuilders, somebody who just want to get big for, for a look. So who are they? Yeah, you'd be surprised. Ninety. I, I only take five competitors at once. Right now I have seven. Um, and I have over 100 active clients. I would say 90, 95% of my clients are just people with a goal, which is awesome because I like that. You know, I don't like the whole industry. I don't like the whole competing. And, you know, I even stress out when I have prep clients and stuff like that. So, like, I have, like, my ideal client is some guy, a guy that, you know, has a wedding in three months and wants to drop 50 pounds. And you know, look good for his wedding. Those are the those are the clients that are my favorite personally, and I have a ton of those. I have a lot of people that come to me super overweight. I have you know a ton of kids that come to me super skinny that just want to put on fifteen pounds. I don't really have that many competitors, which is good. I, I would I rather stray away from the uh, the competitive scene. Do all your clients take substances, or do you have somebody who's completely drug free? I have. I used to take drug free clients. I used to, and I stopped. Because it's just not my forte, you know what I mean? It's not my forte. So I would say right now I have, I have one client that's on that's not on anything, and I have over a hundred active. I and I've been working with that one client that's been natural forever. So I decided to keep coming to them. But if somebody wants to come to me naturally, it's just not my forte, man. I like fast changes. I don't want to see my clients checking every week with, you know, minimal results because they're natural. You know, I want my clients to make some extreme changes in twelve week periods, and they do. Um, so that's why I try to stray away from that. Why do you think some people are strongly against steroids? I don't know, man. Like I understand why people like are, are um, you know, against like crack and heroin because it could, it, could, it like, it makes you into a different person. Meaning, like you act to different towards other people. You're intoxicated. You know, you don't take a shot of steroids and like are, you're not like high and like do dumb shit. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't know. Like, and I honestly, man, like if somebody is a cokehead. And they're completely fine, treat everyone nice, you know, don't fucking do dumb shit. You know, I don't care. But if you take a hit of crack or something and go rob liquor stores, then there's something fucking wrong, you know what I mean? And if you take a steroids and you think that shooting steroids causes you to beat your wife, get off the fucking steroids, you know what I mean? I think steroids have a bad rap, first of all, because they're an injectable. Anything dealing with needles, people get, like, kind of weird about. And there's no real research done on them. It's not really open to the mainstream. You know what I mean? It's not open to the public. So they don't really know much about it. So they just think, oh, steroids, needles, growing bigger muscles. They think you just take a shot of, a shot of steroids and you just build muscle and you look like a freak. You know what I mean? Which is not the case because I guarantee you 85% of the kids or the people at the gym I go to across the street are on steroids and you would never even know. You know what I mean? What is the worst adverse reaction you had to, to steroids? Uh, my gyno, my gyno when I was younger, I used to lactate. Like I, I, I could like do like, I could pu like push my nipple down and shoot like probably like five feet like of like fluid. That was probably the worst. Yeah. And then I got my glands cut out. That didn't feel shitty. It's just kind of weird that you could just shoot, you know, this toxic waste that smells like fucking, it's just gross, man. You just shoot out of your nipples. <laughs> Actually, the first incidents, man, this was crazy. I was, I had puffy ass nipples. I didn't know what was going on. I was 17, and it wasn't from injectable steroids. It was from the pro hormones that were legal back then, and they're actually steroids, but nobody knew. So I was in the gym, and I was strong as hell, bloated at 17. I was probably like 240 at 17, bloated. Put the dumbbells on my chest, come back. I lay back and I do a few reps, right? Come up like this, rack the rack the weights, and I had a white shirt on. And all of a sudden, I see this, like, green stuff all over my shirt. I go, what the fuck is this? I was like, oh, the dumbbells are wet. They're, they must be dirty, you know? Then I do another set. They hit my chest. And, you know, I'm doing it. And then I'm all, I'm literally my whole white shirt is just covered in this green shit. I'm like, what's going on, right? Then my ex-girlfriend at the time, like, hit my chest. 
And I looked at my pajama shirt, and I had all this green stuff everywhere. I'm like, what the hell? So I go in the the, uh, the bathroom, playing with my chest, and I'm just squirting all this kinds of shit out of my chest, dude. And, um, yeah, that was definitely the, the craziest side effect I've ever had. Wow. Did you, did you stop using it, that specific substance, after, after that happened? Oh, oh, no. I was still using it. <laughs> <laughs> you just I was still using it. <laughs> so you just didn't care. <laughs> well, first and foremost, the rivalry never. Me and Ronnie have always been extreme friends, uh, uh, fierce competitors on stage, but we always had a mutual respect. And probably out of all the bodybuilders, we're probably the closest. Um, so there was never no type of... Uh, uh, Ida Mossian or anything like that, you know, and, and furthermore, you know, Ronnie has uh, came up publicly a billion times and, and, point, and point blank said if it wasn't for me, he wouldn't have ever won. So I've told quite a few people everything I told Ronnie and, and up and coming bodybuilders too. None of them look like him, 